president. He is one of the men, young men, that God is raising up to turn America back to God. We are so proud of what you're doing. We are so honored to have you with us. And we want you to give your testimony. Do whatever the Lord has you to do. In Jesus' name, amen. This place is about to explode in a sec. Hey, listen, I have a few quick minutes. And uh, are y'all ready? Okay, okay. Hey, just, just buckle up for the next few minutes because we're about to go somewhere. You see, right now during worship, I found it so interesting that the first song they sang was about revival. And here's what I was sensing during worship. There is a spirit of revival in the building tonight. Now here's the thing about revival. It's not just some cute, charismatic term. The spirit of revival is when the church of Jesus Christ returns back to first love to Jesus. But secondly, it's when the lost are revived back to life through Jesus. And I just feel so strongly in my spirit. We're gonna have a moment here in a sec, but there's two scriptures the Lord was just playing in my mind, in my heart over and over again. Number one, it comes out of Revelation. We've all heard it. We overcome the enemy by what? The blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony, and not loving our life unto death. And so I just wanna share a quick part of my testimony. You see. What testimonies carry is they carry breakthrough. And when you release your testimony, not only are you stomping on the head of the devil, but you're allowing others to catch the breakthrough in the room. And you see, for me, it started from day one. I was born by artificial insemination. I grew up in a lesbian household, two moms. I had never been to church my whole life, never heard a worship song, never heard a sermon. I was never in an atmosphere like tonight. And you know, what happened in that moment is the world became my father. Culture, entertainment, music became my father and what shepherded me in my life. Whatever the world said is what I did. But at 16 years old, a friend invited me to church. And long story short, I felt the presence of God for the first time in my life. And I said, Jesus, my life is yours. Yeah, come on, amen. But here's the deal. After I get saved, I'm walking with Jesus for a few years, I actually walked out of intimacy with God. I played the blame game. I said, God, I don't have the money, I don't have the relationship, I don't have X, Y, and Z, and I got mad and bitter at God. But guess what? In 2020, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, Ross, if you don't stand now, you never will. And so I said, Jesus, I repent for these last three years of my life. You can have every part of me. And to make a long story short, I have had the privilege of traveling America, the streets of America, from the West Coast to the East Coast to share the gospel. Here's why I say that. Here's why I say that. Listen, listen, I'm not here to hype myself up. The point I'm trying to make is you might have come from, or you might even be in the most hopeless, godless, darkest situation. But you know what that is to God? He says, perfect for revival. He says, that's the one I want right there. The one who comes from the broken family. The one who doesn't come from the church. He says, I want to use your life and set you on fire with a spirit of revival. And this is the second scripture the Lord gave me. I want to read it real quick. I want to read four verses and then we're going to just do a quick moment here. Isaiah 61, the Lord has been playing this on my heart just for days. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted, to proclaim the captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. Some of y'all about to get free tonight. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come, and with it the day of God's anger against their enemies, to all who mourn in Israel. He will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a blessing instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of heaviness. Some of you are about to take off the last season's garment. But here's where I want you to key in. This is where I want to finish. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. Listen to this right here. Here's the key verse. They will rebuild the ancient ruins, repairing cities destroyed long ago. They will revive them, though they have been deserted for many generations. Here's the question God dropped in my heart. What if? What if you were the one that's supposed to shift your city? What if you were the one that's supposed to shift your family? 
What if you were the one who's supposed to shift your state and shift the nation of America? God is using those, not just me, thousands of people across the nations of the earth who have come from the most broken, hopeless, and darkness situations. And he's saying, I wanna use your life for revival for the sake of my purposes. And so here's what we're gonna do. I know we've done five altar calls tonight. Amen, I love altar calls. Let's bring those back to America. You wanna know what an altar is? You see up here, you just see some staging, some lights. Friend, you're very wrong. This is an altar to the living God. And an altar is a place where God meets man. As I've traveled the nation, every single person that responds to these altar calls encounters the living God. I want everybody to stand up if you can right now. Just stand up if you can. What I don't want right now is if none of these apply to you, please don't come forward. I only want you to come forward if these apply to your life. The Lord showed me three types of people. Number one, you're a believer in Jesus, amen, but you've lost your first love. You're burning for the pleasures of the world instead of the pleasures of Jesus. You're burning for the pleasures of this world instead of the presence of God. And you see, when the presence of God becomes your greatest desire, everything else gets burned out of your life. Number two, some of you in here tonight, you have never surrendered your life to Jesus. Friend, I don't know how you got here, but you're here. I don't know if you got dragged here. I don't know if you saw social media. Maybe you just walked in the doors. Maybe you thought it was gonna be another cute Christian conference. Wrong. Jesus wants 100% of your life. Let me say it like this. This is the best, best place to get free tonight. You're in a room of thousands of believers and you can receive freedom. But here's the last group of people. You've been living with the wound of fatherlessness that has led to the orphan spirit in your life. Let me explain really quick what that means. You always feel isolated. You always feel lonely. No matter how many people love you, you never feel like you're valued. That's called the orphan spirit. And God is breaking off the orphan spirit of one of the most fatherless generations on the face of the planet. So here it is. So here it is. When I do altar calls, I love every single eye open. Why? We need people who are making a decision no matter who's to their left, who's to their right, who's behind them, who's in front of them. We need people sold out for Jesus. And so here's what I want to do. Can I have my people in the front? Can y'all take like four steps back as much as you can, as many steps as you can take real quick. God's about to set people free, save people, and touch people's lives. I'm going to count to three, and on three, if you're in any of those boxes and you feel any pulling in your heart, friend, it's not because I'm a good preacher, it's the spirit of the living God drawing on your heart tonight. One, I wanna silence every single voice of, yeah, there it is. I wanna silence the spirit of religion right now in Jesus' name. The spirit of religion that says it's just an altar, it's just another moment. No, this is a moment for your life to be changed forever. Two, friend, do not miss your moment with Jesus tonight. You can easily walk out of this room the same way you walked in. Here's how I like to say it. Jesus will never put his hand on your back and force you, but he'll put his hand out in front of you and say, son, daughter, will you come? Yeah. And so tonight is not a forceful thing. Tonight's not a church thing. Tonight's a soul thing. And you're about to have a marking encounter with the living God. If that's you three, just come up right here and I want you to get on your knees. Just real quick, real quick, real quick. Wherever you at, don't play games. Come up real quick, real quick, real quick. Come on. Celebrate, celebrate. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anybody else? Hurry up. Quick, quick, quick. Anybody else? You got to run up here. Get up here right now. Get up here right now. Thank you, Jesus. He's already touching people. If you're up here, just close your eyes. Just close your eyes, open your hands. It's just a posture to God saying, God, I'm open. I don't even have to say anything. Jesus is already touching people's hearts right now. I see it. The tears are coming. That's the presence of God softening your heart. Wow, thank you, Holy Spirit. Is there anybody else you need to come up here? Just get up here quick. Just get to your knees real quick, wherever you're at. Sometimes the Spirit moves quick and you gotta go quick. I want everybody up here and everybody in the crowd, we're gonna pray, why? The Word of God says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. And so we're just gonna make a confession of faith. I just want everybody to do this, just say, Jesus, I give you my life. I believe you are the Son of God. 
You shed your blood and broke your body for me. Jesus, I repent and I turn from all my, all my sin and all my mistakes. I receive you as the Lord of my life. Say this last thing, say, Holy Spirit, fill me with power. I wanna pray one last thing and then we're gonna move forward here. I just declare and command every orphan spirit to leave now in Jesus' name. Every single wound of fatherlessness be healed now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I speak to the spirit of oppression. Every yoke of the devil be broken now by the anointing of God. I command every spirit of darkness to leave your mind now. Jesus is touching people right now. If you're in the crowd, extend your arm. How would you pray if this was your brother? How would you pray if this was your sister, your mom, your aunt, your uncle? Come on, church. You're a part of this moment. Every bit of depression, you end right now in Jesus' name. Spirit of anxiety, I command you out. Yeah, keep going, church. People are getting free right now. I can literally see it and hear it. People are getting completely free. We take authority over every spirit other than the Holy Spirit. You leave now. Yeah, every spirit of sickness that has entered your life through a bitter heart, be broken now in Jesus' name. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, even more. Yeah, if you need to get up here, get up here right now. If God's, if God's ministry in your heart, get up here. Don't play games, get up here right now. God is touching people. Lord, release the spirit of breakthrough right now. I speak to every mind. The peace of God come upon you now. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray for every person up here that you would give them their family. Give them their people they're supposed to do life with. Ooh. Lord, we just declare your blood is the greatest blood. Blood of Jesus cover every person right now. I see the Lord, he's dealing with your mind, he's going to your heart, and then he's healing your body. Yeah, we speak to every bit of mental health, mental illness that is not from God, get out now. I sense there's been a lie that God has caused something in your life, friend. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus said I came to bring life and life abundantly. So every lie of the devil, I command to leave your life as well. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is a holy moment. Fill every person. Fill every person right now. Fill every person. Yeah, he's doing it. Jesus is the great deliverer. He is the greatest deliverer known to man. The Holy Spirit is the actual Spirit of God. Thank you, God. Marriages be restored now in Jesus' name. Bitter hearts be tenderized now by the Holy Spirit. Every bit of apathy, we break your power. Thank you, Jesus. 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 